Hello and welcome back for another episode of FPL Journey to 10K. This is episode 41, Matt. Uh, still the only podcast and series which delves into the mind of the former world number one, Matt Corbage. How are you, Matt? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Liverpool have won, which is um, always a positive day. We we look we look pretty good for the first 70 minutes. A bit ropey for the 10 minutes when we... We conceded twice, but not a bad day all round. No, oh, good. A little bit different as well. We're recording on a on a Sunday, kind of on not not Sunday. middle of the game week, but like yeah, still a game to go with uh, United and Palace, which um, interesting isn't it? Isn't a dub uh, a, a, like a, a done thing now? But like it feels like for a lot of the season, a United uh, fixture doesn't matter from an FPL point of view. But I think quite a lot of people have got a few little assets. I've got Dallow and oh. Fernando. You've got. Fernandez and Eze to go uh, right. So. Correct, correct. I think uh, it could be could be some some decent points there. Hopefully, I'm I'm hoping for an attacking game, a, a little three two to Palace. That'd be nice. Uh, well, yeah. I appreciate you'll you'll probably go for a, a solid one nil United away win. Yeah, of course, man. Of course, of course, of course. But like, yeah, I think um, I think um, as well, it's, it's been a high scoring week, you know, so I think um, it's always fun, even if every single highly owned FPL player. A score that's still fun, right? So, I think we're Absolutely. both on on for a hundred points with a well, bit yeah. of luck. Let me um, let me load it up because we are indeed both near on the the century. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, you, well, you, you should get it. You'd be incredibly unlucky, right, if you didn't get it. Given you know, Fernandez, if he doesn't play, Salah yeah. coming on, and you draw as it as well. I think something. Red cards and own goals card. would happen for it, for it not to <laughs> not to happen for you. But um, yeah, it's like nicer. Uh, Nice um, score and nice, nice green arrow um, for you. I mean, what was your move? Let's go on your team. Let's start with your team, mate, first. Yeah, yeah. So my move was in defence. So I sold... Who did I sell? I sold... Oh, yeah. My, my Burnley defender, El Dakiel, because I had some budget. Finally left. He was never going to play. I was going to play Pedro Porro, but he ended up on zero. I bought in Gavardiol, who, um, a bit like Branthwaite, didn't keep a clean sheet, but won a penalty for the team. So... Uh, Gavadiol got an assist, ended up bringing in a bonus point. So based on that transfer, I'm, I'm six points better off. So so, so fairly happy with that. I, I can't remember if this has ever happened in my FPL career. Um, and 12 years I've been playing, by the way. I've got two players left to go, but of the nine players that I've played, every single one of them has got a return. I don't recall that happening. Uh, and so hopefully that, that trend continues tomorrow and Bruno and Eze um, do, some, do some damage. But Look like you're probably on for a century yourself, even if you know maybe if Dallow and Fernandez get two each, maybe not so much. But I feel like you'd be you'd be unlucky not to, and yeah. especially if Fernandez well, doesn't play because you've got Son yeah. coming off the bench. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, I think I think I think yeah, I'll probably be yeah. I think I'd be disappointed if it's a bit more difficult for me to get there. But like I think yeah, with two players left and one of them being Fernandez. I think I'll be uh, be disappointed if I don't get get that 100. But um, yeah, it's one of those ones where like it's just been a very high scoring game week, right? So I think um, really it's been determined whether you captain Haaland or not. Some people like yeah, I don't think it's unlucky. Like obviously he was the best captaincy option, but like yeah, people who didn't captain him had a bit bit of a, a large swing. But yeah, across the across the board really like. Um, Different routes had different like scorers. Well, obviously you went Saka, who got um, double digits. I went you know, Jackson. I did a lot of other people who recently wild carded. So it kind of evened itself out really. So even those big big scores, I think um, the green arrows aren't exactly impressive, right? That's it. That's it. I was I was hoping like for a ninety eight. Thirteen thousand move doesn't feel that much. That said, I got ninety two the other week and I got a red arrow. So yeah. I should be happy with uh, with any form of green. Yeah, um, your team's looking good though. Like so, like obviously, like you said, everyone's like everyone's returned. So this was the week you needed to do well because this, this correct is really, your triple correct. Arsenal um, stood out. So Ray yeah. and Gabriel and Saka all getting returns. I mean, I'm gonna put out there the Saka goal was was fortunate, right? Obviously, he had a penalty which. I think was was very 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 soft oh, yeah. with that like habit yeah. kind of dive like so that that was that was that was that was fortunate. But on the flip side, you know, Gabriel could have had a fifteen point score with uh, 
It was yeah. nice, nice volley that was 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 disallowed. But um, yeah, Bramthwaite has been out of the signing, right? So he's got another. He's got five. What's he got? Five points this week. But he's yeah. got a return every single game he's since you far off. Not far off. There's one game he got an own goal, I think, and he ended up on minus yeah. one. But in the over the like ad, adding it all up in the five game weeks I've had him, he has returned thirty six points for a four yeah, point three million. I think he was when I yeah. bought him, but. I, that is an outstanding return. I, I love it when it happens, right? I, I'm going to say, put it out there, and you'll admit, right? There's a bit of luck there, right? Because you can predict the, oh, yeah. you can predict the clean sheets, and they had a decent run Everton, right? So which is which is why you went for an Everton defender. But like, Branthwaite is the most attacking defender with like a couple of assists, couple of like goals. That's lucky. But you you got him break, and you probably went there just purely because of the price point. Would you? You got him absolutely. Would you? Yeah, yeah, there was. Uh, if I could, if I could, uh, could have afforded Tarkowski, I'd have gone for Tarkowski, no question about it. But I just, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money for it. You got, so, uh, it. You got worked, it. worked in my favour. But like, I think it was like probably two or three seasons ago. There was a big double of it, like around like Christmas time, winter time, and it was like Man City, and then um, I think the, the cause what defenders you go, and I think some people went John Stones purely because of he was the budget option there. So at that time, he was no no means like the, the first choice defender. And I think he scored like three goals during the game week versus like wow. an injury in the first in, in the first game for like Ruben Diaz. So like, yeah, these like swings when you go for the budget option are, 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 are um, good. But um, yeah, well done on the Gradiol move. I mean, uh, I have to say I'm, I'm kind of worried like uh, given like not as a non-owner. So obviously... A defender getting fouled for a penalty, you can say it's a bit. You can't predict that it's a bit fortunate, but I think his yeah. expected goal involvement was again like 0.3, right? So he's he's playing as the the left the winger, essentially left midfielder, like in the in, in the setup at the moment. So um, I know you were going to talk about City assets, kind of like um, in a second, but yeah, you've yeah. got to be happy with Guardiola, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Happy with him. I mean, I'll just run through very quickly if you're just listening. So, Rea, Gabriel, both got clean sheets. Gradiol and Brantway got an assist each. Uh, bonus point for Gabriel and Gradiol as well. Saka with a goal and some bonus. They got Sonu got seven. Palmeru got eight. Haaland captain, 42 for him. And then Isaac up top. And despite getting a goal and an assist, did miss a penalty. Took him down to six, but he did get a bonus. So, that took him to seven. Two to play. Fernandez White Palace as a at home to United. So 98 points, giving me a game week rank of currently 410k. I did have a look, which um, this will interest you as well, in case you haven't looked. I went on live FPL uh, and the average players, the average yeah, FPL players have less than one player to go this game week. They've got like 0.8 or something, the average player. In the top 10k, it was about 0.9 to play. So we should hopefully see those green arrows uh Better than better than they are presently, but I've gone from 108k to 95k, two to go. Um, cool. so yeah, got to be happy going into game week 37. Broke back into the top 100k. Hopefully, I can cement that a bit more tomorrow with some some Eze and Fernandez as goal. It's do it. I think what it's weird. It, Eze is the one I'm hoping because the, the United defense we've spoke about this for a couple of weeks has just been getting peppered with shots every week, and uh, Maguire's now out for three game weeks. So it's like mm. who are they playing at centre back? They've got Casemiro, who's a DM by trade, and nobody who else is fit. Uh, my worry is against Liverpool in the FA Cup when they had all these injuries, they moved Bruno Fernandes to centre back. That's my worry. That is my worry that that happens yeah. again. But then I've got Eze attacking two centre backs who aren't centre backs. So that's where my hope lies. Uh, but you've got Bruno as well, and, and obviously 95 points. Like, talk us through your team. Yeah, it's kind of funny you say that. Yeah, like Fernandez actually, when you get him and then he, they play him centre back or really, really deep for whatever reasons because he's the be their best player. That's incredibly frustrating when that happens. Yeah, because when he's like a number eight or number ten, like is it's kind of like stats are like off off the charts, right? And he's been really, really good the last couple of gaming. So that 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 would be kind of like you know, classic, a cl kind of like a classic case of. Uh, when you bring a player in, but um, yeah, I, I got ninety-five points, like you said. So um, yeah, kind of like a green arrow to so one hundred and eighty. I think I was looking at uh, like the FPL. It's pretty closer now with the Jackson kind of goals. Probably closer to about yeah. one hundred and sixty um, now. So 
um yeah like my, my team back the front um edison and go so he he was the person who did the mistake really for the huang goal right the the kind of conceded so i always yeah always fall into this trap he's he's, he's a really bad fpl asset right he always finds a way to concede a goal never gets bonus points never get save points really so um i went there for the minute security so but like i think myself like a lot of edison mo- uh, owners now like looking at vardio and like you know in my case anyway i was like seriously considering him but it was that minutes kind of kind of risk that that put me off but yeah it's tough that he's like yeah you know, he's now you know he's played quite a few in a row i think it's like six in a in a row and like he's getting great underlying attacking stats and he's getting attacking returns as well so Edison, yeah, like <laughs> he's just like in, imprinted yeah. in my brain. Don't go there. Like it's it's never a, never a, a good good experience. Um, obviously, yeah, Gabriel um, got the clean sheet and, and a bonus point. Happy with that. Burn, um, yeah, it was a bit annoying. Like the, the defensively, Newcastle weren't great. They deserved to concede at least one goal, but just the nature of it when it was like right at the end of the game. That's a bit frustrating, right? So, like a little bit, bit of a bit of a shame there. I've still got Dallo to go against Palace, but as you said, the um, Manchester United the, um, defense has been really poor um, statistically and and in reality for for quite a long time. And I think um, yeah, it's always a good thing to like look at these statistical trends for teams in terms of their expected goals conceded because like they always kind of get convert converts eventually, right? So I think. Yeah. West Ham is a great example of that where like they were bottom of the lists for the league for like quite a long time, but it hadn't really converted into hammerings, but they've had a few hammerings now, right? By yeah. against yeah. quite a few Absolutely. teams, right? So you know, obviously Chelsea kind of today being like the most recent example. So yeah, I'm not too too kind of hopeful for Dallow, but like he can get an attacking return. He's like a, a decent player. Um in the midfield, yeah, kind of got returns from Palmer, Foden, Bruno Fernandez still to go if if not, yeah, Son comes on for seven points. Um, and then, yeah, Gordon. I started Gordon over Son just because. So it was a really diff- difficult one. But Burnley are just a lot worse than Liverpool, right? And I think based on the the games and the goals scored, I think, you know, that, that was true. Um, yeah. Obviously, the disappointing thing with Gordon was like, yeah, Isaac missed the pen. Like, and that, I think that's part of Gordon's game, the way he presses, the way he attacks. He does win a lot of penalties, right? So that's not a, a fluke. That's just part of his game and what you get as part of one of his assets. So, yeah, and unfortunately, like, yeah, it would have been a double-digit kind of haul from Gordon, but it was you know, six points you'll take. But, yeah, a bit of a, a large point swing there with that, that kind of Isaac kind of penalty miss. But if I look at underlying stats from the games, I think, yeah, Gordon was expected going what was it, above 0.5. Sons was below 0.4, so... Yeah, he edged it. So, yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. <clears throat> and then obviously up front, you know, kind of Harlan like smashed it and, and good deserved that kind of return based on his underlying like, stats. He's like, again, is looking incredible. Um, yeah. Missed the penalty, but like, yeah, still got seven points. And then, you know, Jackson got his two goals and a, an assist. And three bonus. And with Jackson, it's again, it's like, an, this is like a part of the story where these underlying stats, they eventually come come through i mean he's got a lot to do to kind of like cover all the missed chances from early in the season right yeah. but 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 getting into those positions is just really kind of key from an, att- an attacker which is why like expect the goals expect the goal form it's just like kind of really king of the stats when it comes to predicting these sort of things and like jackson yeah he's got 13 goals for the season none of them being penalties yeah so like he's doing well Good for kind of like yeah. first first uh, season in the Premier League, so I don't mean, you know, I don't mean that was a particularly lucky re- return. Like, and also shouldn't be too surprising given like West Ham are the worst defense in the league at the moment. So, yeah, um, yeah like yeah, kind of like a satisfactory week kind of so far. I guess like yeah, Edison over Guardiola was like a regret again, and then um, yeah, Son over Gordon a little bit. There's only one point, but like yeah, Gordon could have got a little little bit more. Um, I guess um that was it where I was gonna go next. Um yeah, Edison <laughs> it's kind of yeah, it's kind of annoying. Uh, I think 
yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a swing. Yeah, Edison and Guardiola and like you know, there's the the pathways that that kind of opens up. Like obviously, <laughs> if you weren't an Edison keeper, you keep owner, you'd, you'd probably play Petrovic compared to Vicario or an Onana this week. So you've got a clean sheet there. So yeah, there's like definitely that like 50 50 call is branching like definitely uh yeah. green vibes in, in in kind of one way's favor i mean yeah, the other thing looking at my team because I, I wild carded obviously last week so I, I i kind of reflect on stuff is um probably it was a bit of a mistake not to keep a second arsenal defender just for this week right so rather than Dallow, i could have had saliba who got um eight eight points i believe could have kept the two bonus, bought, he? yeah could have brought in um brought in white but um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to bake in transfers, just because yeah, injuries yeah. can happen. And like, I think that was still sensible. But obviously, the way it's worked out is I've been very lucky. Let's see what happens with Fernandez. But on paper, it looks like I've been very lucky with with injuries the last two game weeks. I mean, yeah. a lot of people are receiving the other side of that, right? A lot of people have got Maguire, Cher, Van der Heck, yeah. all these guys injured, right? So I think it was probably the right call not to bake in transfers. But of course, the way it's worked out for me, I would have rather kept Saliba over Dallow. And yeah. then I could have like, yeah, played him this game week for like a really nice, a nice fixture against um Bournemouth. But yeah, so it's 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 um yeah, all right, all right, I think. Yeah, I'll take that. It's so great. It's I, I, I we spoke last week, I've been non lucky with some injuries. Happy to see Aint Norris start. I know yeah. it was against City. I was never going to play him, but really good for me for next next game week when I come on to my team. Nori was a single game week player. I don't mind playing him on the bench boost. Um, so happy to see him start and play 90 minutes, in fact. So so clearly that injury yeah. is hopefully, hopefully behind him. But yeah, talk about double game weeks, Matt. Last time we spoke around uh, game week 34 when we last had the doubles and we went through the different positions so i thought we'd do it a bit different this time and instead i'm going to run you through the teams that are all playing in the double and we're okay. going to talk through them and want it for a few minutes each and it'll just be a case of who do you think if you could have three from each team who would the three be and we're going to start with man city to help you out i'll give you their top seven based on form over the last six game weeks and then I'll give you the top three for predicted points for game week 37 as a standalone. Unsurprisingly, Haaland is top of both. Yeah, I, I from so City, I'd go Haaland, Foden, and Guardiola. Um, yeah, obviously, so like it's, what what the, this like expected FPL points doesn't show is the per night E stat. So obviously, like a key thing there is looking at Foden, his minutes is. 292 versus De Bruyne's 500, right? So I think if you like do the maths, it's like a lot closer. If not, Foden would be a little bit higher um, than um, De Bruyne if you weight it based on actual minutes. So um, if you could afford De Bruyne, you'd still prefer to go Foden? I think so, yeah. I think so. Interesting. Because I'm looking at that and I'm thinking expected goals four. Uh, sorry, expected goals at 1.07, but he's actually scored five. Like his, his expected FPL points, 24.4. He's got 44. He's at four, 20 points, nearly double as expected is what he's delivered. That That's insane. Yeah, but, but still, let's do, let's do the calculation. Like if you do his like, expected FPL divided by the minutes, yeah? What's that? 24.25 yeah, divided by... Calcula we'll get the calculators out. Yeah. I should be able to get. I can get you the full season expected goal involvement per ninety. Zero point five five, which is absolutely solid. That's for Foden. Zero point five five over the season. And then I think it's looking at like seven points per per ninety of this little run. And then you've got the Bruyne at like so you've got thirty six point six five four two divided by five hundred times ninety. Yeah, he's less. So even like so. He, Expect the FPL points per 90 during this like recent run. Yeah, Foden is Foden's ahead. over seven, and then De Bruyne's 6.5. Right, so oh, yeah, if you assume that, so ignore the, the overperformance. Yeah, a valid point is, is recent overperformance, but it's a bit of a moot point, right? I yeah. think it's you're doing the predicted kind of going ahead, and even during this recent period, like 
if they had equal minutes, Foden's underlying performance is better than De Bruyne's. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's clearly he's um, getting more shots off. Yeah, unsurprisingly, De Bruyne's getting more expected assists because it's De Bruyne and he's taken all the set pieces pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate Foden's had 11 shots and De Bruyne's had uh, eight here, but he's over 200 minutes less for Foden. So clearly behind Haaland, he's... And, he seems to be the go-to from the midfield for, for those yeah, yeah, getting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah predictor points predicted from uh, FPL fix Hallen top, KDB second. Interestingly, Edison third. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be a, it's got to be an expected minutes waiting there. I'd love if that was the case, but they're probably like adding a lot of uncertainty for all the defenders. Like they're going to probably say they're going to pay one point three games, like or. Yeah. I don't know, 120 minutes over the the the, the 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 two two game weeks, but like Guardiol does stand out there, just like those expected FPL points of 38.85 in the last um, yeah, might have come, but period of seven games. Six game weeks, yeah. There's but a yeah. big gap between him and other defenders there. Well, the only other yeah. defender appears is a, a Kanji, but like, yeah, he's kind of like looking good. He is looking good. Yeah. Um, so, like, first, as a non-owner, you just got to hope that he gets rotated. And the the two fixtures in the double game week are close for City, and of course, they do have yeah. options to rotate. Ake's back. Ruben Diaz is back. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. The number of shots ten for Guardiola. Mm, yeah, for and a defender. Uh, yeah, no, so it's just reflective of how how he's playing now. Yeah. Like how they played the last seven is that he's been playing as left winger. So obviously, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I had I had this view of that he's a, like a centre back and a left centre back, but like um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I think we did. We, we were saying actually that like um, like yeah, a couple of game weeks ago that he's like looking very advanced, but I think we were just a bit <coughs> put off that he'll get rotated. But it looks like um, he's playing very very well. Um, he's ju- he's jumped in he's- price. He's jumped in price uh, to five point one. So he's now more expensive than a Kenji and an Ake, but. Not by much, only by point one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Haaland, KDB, and Edison on fix. But you think for you, top three, you'd go Haaland, Foden, then Gvadiol? I'd put Gvadiol as the second best, the second best option because there's just a real lack of defender options. So I think he's head and shoulders better than any other double game week defender option. Midfield, on on the other hand, has a like whole host of options really. So um, yeah. yeah, I think he's a really good option, and probably at the moment. Um, his minutes uncertainty versus the upside of his, his potential for attacking returns and bonus linked to it, I think, yeah, outweighs Edison's minutes certainty. But I think it's good, that especially City. The fact that Arsenal keep winning, right? Because it means City can't win the league until game week 38 if Arsenal mm-hmm. continue to win. Yeah. Right. So, do you think? So, you've got to think. Pep's going to be playing best 11 week in, week out, which has got to do Guardiola a favour. Yeah, well, the, th- the thing is with the double game, because it's Saturday to, to Tuesday turnaround, right? So it's not a, a week's yeah. rest. So I think I think that, that, that's probably the, the game where there'll be some rotation. Yeah. Who have they got that game? Is that the, the away, aren't they? Both games. One's full and one's Forest. So I think that's away at Forest. Hmm. Uh, which would be interesting, because if, if Forest have got to win that to stay up, They'll obviously have a have a real go at it. So I think both both of those games are, 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 are could be modest really. They're, they're not going to be easy games. They're not easy games. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but no, it's, it's the Spurs game. It's the Spurs game on the on the Tuesday, and then the Saturday yeah, game is yeah. uh, it's the midday, Fulham away midday, and then uh, away to Spurs on the Tuesday. Oh yeah, got it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they played Forest and beat them recently. Yeah, don't know why I've got Forest and yes, they they recently beat them. Um, so yeah, tough game, tough game. The Spurs game that'll be the that'll be the one I assume Pep will have his eye on as the potential, or Arsenal fans will have their eye on as the potential bludger. Spurs usually do well against City. Okay, moving on, next team. So yeah, just for this one, Haaland, Gvadiol, Foden, uh, Spurs next. So again, double game week one at home, uh, the away at Burnley or at home to Burnley, and then they've got Man City at home in yeah. the double. Uh, but Johnson, Brennan, not Brendan, Brendan Johnson, <laughs> top of the form list, doesn't appear in the top three predicted points. But 
Richarlison's not in the form list because he's been injured, but he's now back, came back today with a goal and an assist and is expected to be the second highest scoring Spurs player of the game week. Um, yeah, who, what do you think about Spurs? Yeah, good good attack, really bad defence. And I guess, like, yeah, options would be Son, Richarlison, obviously, and then, like, a toss-up between Pedro Porro and Vicario. Pedro Porro because of the potential for assist and goals, and then Vicario because chance to accumulate save points. Yeah. And I've got... Did you see the game today? What's that? Did I see it? I didn't see it, yeah. but I know we were having a bit of a chat about it. So, like, I think... Um, yeah. yeah. Classic. Um, trying to get... A, yeah, just if you're trying to get a cheap way into an attack and wing back at Tottenham, after today's game, Royale will not be starting. I'd be very surprised. I don't think anyone else can the goals were his fault. Yeah, I, I mean... I've got double Spurs defence. I've got Van der Ven just because like, I'm, I'm going to hope. But he scored a, a legit goal and like, disallowed. Yeah. So like, he could be having some quite quite nice points like for, for me. But um, I've gone for that Burnley home game, I think. like, yeah, yeah. Uh, But um, yeah, Royale, I think he has to play though because I don't know who else can, can, can play there given that it's weird. Doggy and, it's and Davis is injured for yeah. the season. So. That's it. So, so, so Liverpool went 4 all. They took him off and put they put Skip. Skip played left back. Okay. And then Tottenham scored twice and Liverpool didn't score. So I mean, don't get me wrong, it was 4 0. Liverpool were cruising. Yeah. They, they made some they made some changes that they wouldn't have otherwise done. Um but yeah, they made they played skip there. So I don't know whether that's that's something that Angel will toy with against Burnley or not. Um but I think you you you've got the right one. If you're going for if you can't afford Porro, Van der Ven seems like the the obvious. Don't go for Real and try and get the upside because I'll as I say, based on today's performance. I don't think he starts. Hmm. Well, I'd rather Romero than Van der Ven. Like, but like, obviously, there's a big difference in price, right? So Romero is a better player and like is a threat from set pieces. But yeah, I, I just went for a, a cheap option with, with, with doubles there. But like, yeah, the obvious yeah. picks would be Son and and and, and Richards and by some margin. Then I think it's yeah, Pedro Porro yeah. and, and Vicario. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're not looking at Madison. Doesn't doesn't appear when no. you thought. Well, he's been dropped, isn't he? Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah, yeah. Bench, um, bench again today. Uh, and when he came on, was misplacing passes all over the shop. Uh, yeah. Didn't didn't look good. So yeah, probably wanted to stay away from. But yeah, son, Richarlison. Richarlison changed the game today when he came on. Mm-hmm. Goal and an assist, as I say, in his in his cameo. Uh, son got a goal as well. And then yeah, po- Poro out of the other attackers. Kulisevsky didn't really do much, so yeah, I think I think Poro if you can afford it. No, Richard Rich is their second best attack in it, so I I, I think um, yeah. kind of really good time for him to come back. You got to be confident he will start the next two games and and do pretty well. Like he has play, he has done well yeah. when he's started as a striker for Spurs this, this season. So I think um, yeah, it's an intriguing option on how you 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 play yeah. around with um, with I've got I've got I've got options and he. He hmm. might be one of them. We'll touch on that later on. Uh, so your three, Son, Rich Allison, Porro will probably be the yeah, yeah, yeah. three. Yep. Uh, Chelsea. Che- now, Chelsea have seemed to have turned a corner. 5-0 against West Ham, but they seem to be putting goals, which uh, has come at the right time for you. Palmer, Jackson, both in your team, yeah. both smashing it. Um, but so I, I'm assuming I'd that cautious, Yeah, I'd be cautious with that because it, it's a nature of playing a really bad defense right in in West Ham but like Chelsea Chelsea have been underperforming this year like their underlying stats have been quite good we we know that but um yeah I mean Palmer and Jackson are by far the best two options and you can kind of <laughs> you can see those ridiculous numbers they put up Palmer is that is insane from Palmer expected yeah. over over the last six so he's only played six times more than should have should have got over 10 points a game for six games in a row. That is insane. Yeah. Oh, Jackson's stats are Jackson's are really good as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um and that 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 doesn't include today's stats, by the way, which I am assuming will bump Jackson up even further. That is that is yeah. prior to today's game. Well, you can see, you can see this sort of stuff is 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 kind of he's been well, he's been performing in line with, with expectations, but he's been due for a big, big haul, right? So I think yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, obviously those two stand out kind of like head and shoulders and like you think as well there's kind of minutes certainty there. Um, 
Yeah. Third option is really tough just because of like, yeah, that aforementioned like minutes oh, kind of certainty. Right. So yeah, I'd say Petrovic. So I kind of agree with I agree with the um fixed predictions there. Palmer, Jackson, Petrovic in in that in that order. I, I don't think I'd be able to Maduake is uh, is probably the the next midfielder you go there. He's in some is in good form and, and seems to be playing like yeah. Yeah, getting the getting the minutes. But I wouldn't be going there. And then again, from a defense point of view, there's too many options. Like Cucurella's there but at the moment as like in terms of the last in terms of the expected points of the last couple of games. But um, I think a few got a few guys are back as well. So he's a rotation risk now. All the defenders are rotation risk, right? So yeah. yeah. Yeah, Cole yeah, yeah, Cole was back who, who's played who was playing left back earlier in the season. So yeah. Yeah, you think two's enough for Chelsea? You wouldn't be rushing in to get a third if you if you had two this game week, for example. Um, You'd be looking elsewhere. I mean depends on which what players you've got and what ones you're lacking. Yeah, Forest yeah. and Brighton away are some good fixtures, I think, from an attacking point of view. So if you don't have Palmer, well everyone's got Palmer, right? But like, if you don't wake up and yeah, get in. I think the same goes for Jackson. You know, like on, honestly, with yeah. Chelsea, you're looking at the next three, and it's Forest, Brighton, Bournemouth. Those are some nice fixtures for an attacker. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think, you want I mean, to go out on a high. I think Jackson is a must have as well. Really, you mentioned Majuka there. So, in goal and an assist again today. His, his numbers have been have been very impressive. He's five point three million. There's a budget option right for these double game weeks, and we'll come on to Man United shortly. But like in that five million to six million range, you might be looking at Garnacho. You might be able to stretch to a Gordon. Do you think Majuka deserves to be in that conversation? Well, Palmer's only six point two, but yeah, I'd, I'd go Gordon and Garnacho over him. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't afford, if you can't reach to six, would you rather go? You'd go. Oh, you mentioned Garnacho. Sorry, Garnacho's only like five. So you'd go Garnacho over him. That's it. There I you think go. so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next team. Brighton, less, probably less exciting, although they got a win today. Yeah, And a yeah. clean sheet against a very good Aston Villa side. Yeah. Um, well, and they put up some good stats as well, right? They, they they should have scored, like, two goals and that didn't really concede much. And, like, the defence has been okay. Actually, from a from a Brighton point of view, from underlying stats point of view, but um, where would I go in Brighton? I think um, Gross is just like always there and a perennial, just in terms of like the ability to. I know he's not Brighton as a as a unit haven't been clicking, and you can kind of see just like these stats the last six game weeks, five six game weeks. You expect their points haven't been great, and the actual points have been really bad if you compare it to the other teams we looked at. So, um, yeah. None of them. None of them going to have great stats, like underlying stats, kind of recently. But um, yeah, I'd go. Gross is the best option. Then Jao Pedro, who has, um, I think, I think he's good enough to to kind of you know, get the minutes when he's on 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 the pitch, right? So yeah, and he's yes. got penalties in his favour. And probably yeah, I'd probably just be going a dunk. Yeah. It's back double to get a defender in. Yeah, they, they've got a decent defence. <coughs> it was only a few weeks ago they had statistically uh, the best defence outside the top four. I, I think statistically their defence has been good. I mean, if you look at the... Um, I'll get the stats up now for the, the Villa game, and obviously Villa are uh, an elite attack, but like um, yeah. they limited them to kind of like nothing. Yeah, Brighton, expect the goals 2.98. Expect the goals against 0.06 against Villa, who were wow. trying to who were trying to get top four as well, right? So yeah, I think mean, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's actually probably a fixture that's kind of interesting there because you see one nil, you think, oh, they've just about got it and stuff like that. Obviously, the, the stats are inflated because they had a penalty and then Jao Pedro had a option to like score straight after the penalty with the with the the, with the rebounds so that, that jumps their stats up. But ignore that they they yeah they they've kind of like yeah beaten. Villa under by underlying stats by at least two clear goals, which is really like pretty pretty impressive. I mean, not far off three. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, I mean, this is the sort of like fixture that could could like suggest like a bit of a change in 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 form. I mean, that's a really in, impressive um, kind of win. And you know, next week they've got Newcastle away. That's tough. 
yeah. Chelsea home is kind of tough. They're not the easiest fixtures, right? They're not the easiest fixtures. Yeah. So it's not it's not the team I'd go straight away. But yeah, I'd say Gross, Jao Pedro, and um and Dunk. Oh, yeah, Dunk, Dunk is always the pick of defenders because of minutes yeah, and, yeah. and attacking threat from set pieces. He's he rolls back the years. He used to, there was always a every time Brighton got a corner, it's like Dunk's gonna mm. score. Roll back the years, but from the sounds of it, though, Matt, you know you haven't got any Brighton players, and they're nowhere on your radar because, as you say, those fixtures are not fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, yeah, you know, I think for a lot of the teams, the fixtures are mid, but yeah, like I think it's tough to tough tough to justify a Brighton player. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man United, then they've got two home games. Yeah, and I think um, you know, interesting fixtures, right? So they've got. You know, as a reminder, they are playing Arsenal at uh, home Arsenal. Yeah, and Newcastle. Yeah. So Newcastle. I think, um, uh, yeah, let's assume the Arsenal one, you're not getting anything from there. Um, the benefit is it, it is at home, but then you're playing Newcastle at home and Newcastle, There's we've seen that stark difference between home and away. And like, yeah. they can concede, right? So I think, I mean, they're, they're kind of more interesting from an attacking point. I know I've got a defender myself, right? But, you know, that was just because I was trying to fit players in. But I think, yeah, the attackers are more appealing for this double. So, yeah, Fernandez, of course, head and shoulders, the best. Then, yeah, Garnacho and Hoysland, I'd like say. And, and this is reflected based on the fixes, um, expected points for the game week, which, you know, 9.6 for Fernandez, 7 for Garnacho. Six point eight for Hoysland, and also the form of the last um, you know, six game weeks. So, yeah. 56, 52 oh. expected FPL for Bruno, then Garnacho at 28, then 20 for Hoysland. But you can see that gap in class between Fernandez and everyone else. I think that the fact that he takes the they've had a few pens, haven't they, over the last six game weeks has probably yeah. helped him out. But he is clearly, even the expected assist, he's a head and shoulders. Dello, though, Dello is. Got the second highest expected assists on that list. So for even from a defender point of view, yeah, they're yeah, getting a lot of shots. Which is why I went, which I went, why I went for Dallow. Now he's he's quite pricey for that that for, for what you're getting. So I kind of like I said earlier, I kind of regret not keeping an Arsenal play for this game. We can then switching on Dallow, but yeah, he's obviously the pick of the the um the the Manchester match. United defenders just because of his assist potential. Yeah. But for you, the three, the three that that are, well, top of the form list and top of the expected data list are the three yeah. to go for. I mean, because obviously that's in isolation, but like Hoyland, he's not an option because Haaland, Isaac, and Jackson are clearly the best three striker options, right? And you might even want to add Calm Wilson there as a fourth best option, right? So yeah, re reality is he's a bit of a non-entity for the game week. So it means that Onana or Dallo become options. Which one do you prefer, Dallow uh, or Pre? Oh, no. Pre Dallow, all things considered. Yeah, yeah, at least he's got an attacking option if uh, if the clean sheet doesn't come in. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. But yeah, you're right. But Hoyland, the Hoyland, a nice differential if you're chasing in the league. Honestly, ch chasing is, is is for people who play just smart. Chasing, not chasing, is probably the best way you can just kind of go up the ranks. People who are chasing this week went Havertz captain. Or Palmer yeah. captain, yeah, rather than yeah. the obvious. Quite made, best quite made. Somebody yeah. in our league who uh, doesn't own Haaland because he's chasing, and it um, has not worked out nicely. Which no, uh, I mean, I was, I was, I wasn't calling him out in particular, but like I am, uh, I'm calling yeah. him out. I'm <laughs> caught. He knows who he is. He knows who he is if he's listening, um, and I'll be telling him. I'll be telling him on directly when I speak when I speak to him next. Um, Moving on to the tune. So Newcastle also with a double mentioned already. One of those is against uh, Man United at Old Trafford. Uh, the other one is a home fixture against Brighton, I want to say. I might be wrong. They might be playing Brighton last. Um, you might have to check that one out. But they, as you say, better at home, have been scoring high, highly, but they obviously scored quite a few goals away just against Sheffield United. Might have been a one-off based on the team they were playing. Yeah. Uh, but some, but plenty of options here. You know, Isaac and Gordon seem the obvious two, but now you've got Wilson back. Bruno Guimaraes is is getting in amongst the goals. 
defender options. Um, you know, Dan Burns on on the list there, but they've they've got a couple you might want to for, for people to think yeah. about and the Bravka. I mean, a lot of choice. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you need triple Newcastle really, just because of like their fixtures were what they're playing United and Brighton. Yes, to Brighton. I don't know whether that's the last game. Yeah, Brighton's the first game at home, and then like Brighton United the away, game. which yeah. that's really nice for for attackers, right? So I think Isaac is obviously a non-negotiable. Hit him, hit to get him in if you don't own him. Gordon is a great option as well. I think great thing about Gordon is he just like is a bit of a machine and just plays ninety minutes all the time and loads of routes to when he's playing. With Isaac and another decent attacker, there's loads of routes to points. Yeah. Like he's playing with like very good finishers. He can kind of get fouled for penalties. He can score himself. So yeah, Gordon's a yeah. fantastic option as well in his, Those in his own right. Six games, eight assists. That yeah. is that is great returns. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And yeah, like I mean, obviously that you know the last. Game week, he's you know, this game week he got another assist and I like, probably should have got two. So like yeah, he's got lots of routes to yeah, attacking returns. I think then like, thereafter it becomes a bit of a debate. I mean Debravka, I know Pope is in the squad now. Okay. Um so I don't know if Debravka it is a hold, but not a buy, just because of those those reasons. Yeah. Um honestly, I think the next best best option is is Bruno Gumaresh. And like I, I think the stats here base base that up. So, like over the last what seven, six, seven fixtures, he's got the third best expected FPL points based on those out those underlines in games after Isaac and Gordon. So, I think that probably corresponds to where I see him in that team. Wilson, Wilson is an intriguing option. I was like very surprised to see him start as part of a three. Well, I think it was more like a four, yeah. four, two. But he was up front with Isaac, and that Gordon was like a as a a winger on the left, but like I was surprised to see him start. But um, I think the minutes are probably a bit too much too of a risk to go there. But you know, yeah. if you roll that dice, he, he could become bit, he could be big if he gets 120 minutes over the the next two um two games in the double. Um, yeah, the, the defenders I'm not expecting much, you know, against United and Brighton, right? But I think probably the pick of the defenders it is Burn is really boring, but it's probably Burn at the moment given. Yeah. What's the rest of their defence at the minute? It's probably like Lewis Hall, Burn, Kraft, and Livermento at the moment, is it? Uh, yeah, he, he, he's on and off. Kraft, yeah, as you say, he's on. He's uh... Trippy is meant to be back in the squad, though, right? I believe. But again, hasn't played for. I mean, I don't know that, that helps them defensively. Like, I think he was before he was injured. He was really bad. He was like he was like conceding so many mistakes. Like, but um. Yeah, Burn is probably the pick, the pick of the defenders and yeah. can get attacking returns from from um, yeah. from corners and whatnot. The Brav guy, yeah, he, he can be a hold, but I don't think it's a buy just based on um, Pope potentially getting yeah. back for the. I doubt it because of the length of the time he's been out, but he he could he's he's lurking right. So I think yeah, he's at Gordon Burn for me. Yeah, it was, it was good to see Newcastle. Play Isaac and Wilson up front the way they did. It screams at me last year, mate. Like so, last year I ended up what forty three k overall, and it's because in game week thirty seven when there was that double, I captained Isaac. I didn't captain Wilson, and Isaac got one assist, and Wilson scored four. Uh, and there was that position where Newcastle were playing like a front three, and Isaac got put on the left, Wilson down the middle. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just like, this is, this is screaming, it's going to happen again. So it was, it was nice to see them start together but both start as you say more of a 4-4-2 four, four, as opposed yeah. to a not, Isaac on the left not great for for Gordon because you want him to be as part yeah. of a front three rather than on a, as a left midfielder but um yeah. I don't think Wilson's going to start but I think that was more of a case of getting some minutes to like give that as a an option yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Isaac Barnes or Murphy and then Gordon. Yeah, he had a hell of a game at the weekend. I think he got he got two assists, did he not? Yeah. But I didn't think he's not on your list. No. <laughs> no, no, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs> that's, um, um, okay, yeah. so that's Newcastle. So that is that is all of them. That is all of the yeah. teams that are playing twice. 
Uh, hopefully that helped out those of you that were looking at the different teams and, and thinking of players that you, you could bring in. We are always talking about who the best captain option is, and there's quite a few to, to look at. He's done a lot to look at, Matt. He's just scored four goals. He's top of the predicted mm -hmm. points. He's got two nice fixtures for Man City. Nice-ish fixtures for Man City. Is it stick stick with Haaland? Yeah, I, I think so. Although it's it's pretty close. I mean, I'm, I'm probably a bit hotter on Isaac. I think he's a lot closer than than the fix expected points, in my opinion. But I think Haaland, yeah, is, yeah. is the safe and obvious option. But like Isaac is definitely in the conversation. As is Palmer. I think Son less so, but um, he always finds a way to get a return, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. And now that Rich Allison's back, we've seen how they can work together. Um, but yeah, I'm with, I'm with you. I think Haaland, you know, City doesn't matter who they play, right? So they're, they're playing to win the league. He seems like the he's back on back on track. Scored four, two were pens, two two weren't. So he he's kind of scoring all all sorts of goals. His, his fourth goal was an absolute peach, by the way. If you haven't seen it, um, and then yeah, Isaac Isaac's got that home game, which Newcastle are great at home. We spoke about that, but then the other game is away at Man United, and we've also spoke about how poor the United defense is. So if Newcastle Newcastle's tails are up, they could they could get two, three, four yeah. on Old Trafford. No, no question about it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I, I think I agree, mate. I think I agree. Helen one, Isaac two, and then I don't need any more because I own both. So one, no, one no, captain, no. one vice. But yeah, so... I'd be I'd be a bit lower on Son, a bit bit higher on on Palmer as well. But yeah, Isaac, I think is is generally quite close with with Harland, given those two fixtures. But yeah, Harland is you know, slightly slightly better, so I'll, I'll be cap captain him. Obviously, Foden doesn't appear here, which is yeah, yeah. kind of like yeah. um, interesting. So I think you know, kind of Foden probably should be here if you assume he starts the two the two fixtures. I think he'll be wedged. Around Bruno Fernandez, he'll probably be around there in terms of expected points if you assume that he's yeah. he's playing. Um, likewise, probably Gavardio will be you know expected points about eight, right? Do you know what I mean? If if um, do you think he's going to start both games? Which I hate yeah. to say it, but it's true. So on, on that, there's a few people in in a couple of leagues that own Haaland and Foden, yeah. and they captain this week. They captain Foden. Do you ever do you, like? Do you see that as a as a legitimate option? Who did that? that just, <laughs> a few people in one of my in my, in my main league when Foden yeah. captain over Hallam. Is that a little little cash? Your league? reaction says it all, mate. Your reaction says it all because how many how many, how many years have you won that league, league in a row? Um, out of the the eleven we've done it, I've won seven, and I'm I should I should win this one. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, that, that, you answered the question with your reaction. So, yeah, if you've got Foden, but you also have Haaland, go with him. If Foden, if you don't have Haaland, just so there's plenty of teams out there that don't have Haaland, they've probably got Foden. He's, he, is he a captain option over Isaac? Who would you prefer? Isaac, yeah. Okay. Penalties are so big. Know. Penalties are so big. Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. And Isaac has, has, I know Brighton are a, Decent defense on fish on, on paper, but like, um, yeah, Newcastle are very good attacking all season for uh, at home, and then they're playing United, so that screams out goals. And Isaac, yeah. Isaac is like elite in terms of his expected goal involvement and his finishing, is, is, is kind of very good as well, right? So, yeah, that's where you're going. Okay, um, on board with with uh, with that. I think uh, we'll see a few triple captain potentially this week if people don't have the bench boost left as well. Uh, Matt versus Dave time. And I'm not happy, Matt. I am not happy. My generosity has meant I am now two behind instead of level pegging. I'll never get over Mateta because this now means I can only draw because there are two game weeks left and I'm two behind. So I saw him go first this time as well because I would have picked Tony as my first option last week. Are you first? You could be first, mate. You could be first. I know what you mean. Uh, you, you wouldn't have gone Gibbs White first, would you? I wouldn't imagine. No. <laughs> Either way, there's two left. You go first this week. I'll go first <laughs> next week. We'll remember. We'll remember that mm -hmm. I'm first next week. But yeah, 
Tony got nothing. Feel free to have him this week if you want him. He got two points. Bernardo Silva, despite your city, putting in five, didn't come up with any goals or any assists. He played, though. I mean, I was impressed that he, he started and, and, and got some decent minutes. So, like, hats off to you. Yeah. It was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was an educated pick. It was tough last week, picking. I mean, it tells you everything you need to know how tough it was. You picked two Forest players. Now, Gibbs White, luckily, came up with an assist and some bonus, which meant you took it uh, 9 2 4, which puts you 15 13 up, which it means, unless I win the next two, I will be captaining a defender in game week one of the new season. Quality. So, pressure is on. <laughs> You're going Luckily, Guardian, you? I get in, in, in the honor defender. of it, it's like, you know, is what is like Brantway Brantways. Yeah. I'm gonna bring in I'm gonna say I'm gonna captain Brantways. You're actually really good with um, the defenders, aren't you? You're a really good defender with yeah. defenders. So yeah, all right. Call me Sean Dice of fantasy football. Um but yeah, you pick first this week, I'll pick first next week. I'm cool with that. Well uh we will remember. <laughs> I'm being a bit insistent because, like, yeah, I think I think it was the case, but like, yeah, I I owe you, mate. If 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 it wasn't, but I think Tony was the uh, out out. Right. he was the best option, really. He's so yeah, I yeah. reckon. I think so. I, I think it I, makes sense. I know what you're saying. I just got confused between weeks. So yeah, you get to pick. You get oh, to pick first. I'll so. go for Richarlison. <laughs> you're going for Richarlison. Unsurprisingly, <laughs> he was on my list. Um, Richarlison back today with a goal. Well, he wasn't back today. He was back last week, wasn't he? But yeah, um, came off the bench and looked uh, look, looked very good, very yeah. good. Goal and an assist could have could have potentially had more. Look by look change the game for Tottenham. So, no, for sure. um, I can I can see the pick there. I'll just cross him out of uh, of, Sorry, of my. Poor. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go for a guy who's been back for three game weeks. He scored twice. He had expected goal involvement at the weekend of 1.03. Only got 68 minutes. I'm hoping he's going to do get two more 60 plus, 120 total. I'm gambling on Callum Wilson. Oh, I like it. Gains the minutes. I'm going to gain them. The guy is elite when he plays. Um, and Newcastle seem to be scoring goals. So I'm just hoping he's going to be part of it. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for Wilson for my number one. Uh, just look at it. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, it's it's yeah, it's, it's a it's um you can see him getting a massive haul, couldn't you? I hope if, so. I hope so. I need him. Yeah. If he gets the minutes, um, it's kind of tough actually. Like oh, uh, because everyone's been working towards the double, like all the obvious options are are, are kind of have got high ownership. I think I'm gonna go. I thought, yeah. I think I'll go gross. Go for gross. Pascal gross, yeah. Again, double uh, Burnley, Burnley, Brighton, even Brighton's main attacking asset. It's a uh, tough it's one, isn't it? It's Newcastle away. I'm just bank- banking yeah. on them being bad defensively, and like, Chelsea can give up chances as well. So, and like he's he's a banker for something. Yeah, he's going to get the corner and either dunk heads in. Yeah, yeah. he'll be the one that takes it. And then he'll, and then he'll get three bonus. Get three from, he'll do one action yeah. and he gets three bonus from it. So he's a bit of a, a bit of a Gibbs White style player. He does it all the time. Like when I when I when I had him for those few weeks, I had him one assist and turn into a nine point haul. It's like he's only assist. He's only got one one assist, but uh, yeah. magnet for those for those bonus. Um, oh, me, they like the rest of the rest of the picks don't fill me with any joy at all. I was thinking about Bruno Guimaraes again, but if I've got Wilson, I don't. I like. I, like I was considering Bruno. I was considering Bruno. I think yeah. he's. A, I think he's a great option. I don't want to Newcastle. The other one, I'm going to a team that doubles. They've got decent fixtures, and he's returned at least one in his last three games. And I didn't ever think I was going to say this player. 1.2% owned. You worked it out. Conor Gallagher. <laughs> okay. No, he's, been playing no, he's, he's been doing good recently. Uh, he, has, he has been doing he has. good. He's stepped up. Uh, it doesn't fill me with any joy. But yeah, he's the best under 5% Chelsea option. So I'm playing the fixtures. And as mm. I say, in his last three games, he's got he scored two and got an assist in one. So... 
yeah, he's not. He's not. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and dress up Conor Gallagher as as an amazing pick, but he's. Um, I don't mind him in the double game week. Yeah. No. So yeah, my season rests on Callum Wilson getting an absolute having an absolute stormer. Yeah. So just to clarify for Matt Richarlison and Gross, for me Callum Wilson, Conor Gallagher, uh, and this is for me to stay in the game. That's so why I just made that Wilson. power move. But I know you were trying to squeeze in to get. I, I knew the first move this week was going to be quite like, Richarlison. One hundred percent. So um, like um. So what I was looking at, so I was I was just surprised his ownership was like Rodri because he will he will get a goal and yeah. he? he'll he'll do something. Like yeah, yeah. He's just he's over anything, just over five. Yeah, five point nine percent, which I was like surprised at. But he's actually got 145 points over the season, which is like pretty, pretty incredible, really. And like yeah. he's like the clutch player in for, for City. So you just know in one of those games it's gonna need a, a late winner and he's gonna get it. Yeah, 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 like he did in the Champions League final. Does it on the biggest stage? You know, yeah, w- went just, under pressure. Yeah, he's just their best player, and he? he he's probably just the best player in the league, and he really. But like, um, yeah, I was, I was looking at him, but I was like surprised that he's five point nine percent. But equally surprised, he got one hundred and forty-five points over the season. Yeah, it's Kane in it, absolutely Kane in it, mm. and Rice as well. Rice is—I um, don't know what his percent. I'm not going to pick him because he's—he's he's, he's got one fixture. It's away at United. But for that defensive midfielder's position, Rice has got a lot of points. Elite, definitely recently, goals and, and assists fairly regularly. He's getting getting quite high up. Um, he'll tell me how many points. Yeah, he's Rice, got. Is, Rice is one hundred one hundred sixty one. Which again, I'm like shocked at that. That's kind of Good pretty return, amazing. Seven for goals, DM. seven goals, nine assists. So, like, for DM, that is that is a fantastic return. Better than some wing, like most wingers in the league. Yeah, I'm well, playing for the like the two best teams in the division, so it you know yeah it it's, makes sense. But it's it's kind of it's kind of just the most important position to have a really good player in it. That kind of sent that defensive midfielder that, that can kind of roam a bit at times, right? So I think um obviously yeah. that's where live we're lacking yeah. post Fabinho really is to get like someone just really great. There. I can't really think yeah. of a great side who doesn't have someone that's really elite in that position. In that position, yeah. Liverpool tried with McAllister, but he's not a DM, is he? He's, he's better at the attacking position. Um, I can't believe my Matt versus Dave season's hanging on Conor Gallagher. I really can't. That's uh, it's not a good place to be. But it's, I'll start thinking about my defender captain as you, Matt, talk through your game 37 reveal. Uh, yeah, so um, 14 double game week players. So Triple Newcastle with Burn, Gordon, Isaac. Uh, triple City with Edison, Foden, and Harland, who's, who's captain at the moment. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, it's not Guardiola, but like we'll, 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 I'll discuss in a second whether I can move him on. Triple Chelsea with Petrovic, Jackson, and Palmer. Triple Spurs. All the others triple up sound quite good, but yeah, the, the Spurs one don't sound great. Porro, Son, and Van der Ven. Um, yeah, the, the, the kind of shining light there is they do have a Burnley. A home fixture, uh, which like um yeah, I'm putting my hopes on from their, their terrible defence. Got Dallo and Fernandez from uh, Manchester United, and then um yeah, Gabriel as the as the, from Arsenal as the single um single game week that I've got. So um, I'm I'm coming in with two three transfers. Um, I think I'll probably burn it because um I've kind of mentioned that you know obviously as game week 38 and like. Arsenal, if they're still in the league, they've got a home fixture at Everton, which I think is probably one of the best fixtures um, around. I mean, Everton are a decent team, but not not to Arsenal standard. So I think I'd want probably triple Arsenal in my team for that. So I kind of want two, three transfers going into the the final game week to make those moves, you know, Dallow to an Arsenal defender and then any of those midfielders to Havertz or, or Saka, maybe... You know, yeah, might be actually actually difficult for me to get fit in Saka actually with the price points, but yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll have a look at like is it viable to get in in Saka for the final game week? I mean, if I was doing two, um, two transfers, yeah, I can't I can't really do a single transfer that like makes my team better. Really, yeah. um, I've got to do a move with like two players, so I could move, you know, Poro to Guardiola. 
Edison to Vicario. I can't really stretch to Van der Ven to Guardiol. I could move Dallo to Guardiol, Edison to Onana. Um, I could do like a... Yeah, there's not much, much. Yeah, Richarlison would be nice in my midfield, midfield, but I think all my midfield options are better. I could go Foden to Richarlison, Van der Ven to Guardiol. I think these are all marginal for two, two free transfers. These are all really marginal moves. And, you know, people might, might be saying, why don't you move Gabriel to uh, a yeah. double game weaker? There's just no one viable, right? So I think an, a, a Man City defender like Guardiol could be viable, maybe, right? Just about, just about. But obviously I have to move Edison to kind of get there. I don't think I want a Brighton defender, a second Manchester United defender, instead of Gabriel, given I, I definitely yeah. want to play next game week. So, yeah, I think uh, probably the likely move is I'm going to roll. If there's if there's not any injury news, injury news or stuff like that, I'll probably I'll probably roll it, which means burning a transfer. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I see what I kind of see what happens if Fernandez is out, still out, then that makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, I think. It's really tough, tough to think what I'd do. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Right. If Fernandez is out, you could. Van de Ven to Gvariol, Fernandez to Richarlison. I wouldn't be able to do that because I'd have four, I'd have four City, right? Oh, of course you would. Yeah, yeah. there's the I'd issue. Have, I'd probably have to do <laughs> Garnacho in or, yeah, I could do Richarlison in and then Van de Ven to insert other dodgy defender of choice right yeah. so um yeah i think i'm i think I'm, i think i'm kind of set and and i will roll i'm happy with that team i mean bench boost for me it'd be good to get your view um view dave but like for me like i want to get more than 16 points um just because that means that you know, the four players on your bench they've played without any minus points they played the 90 minutes and they've done that twice right so it's like yeah it's uh you know two times eight or Four times four, right? Yeah, sixteen points. I think is the is the bar. I think looking at the real bench I'll have because obviously I'm just messing around with the bench that I've got there. The true bench players would be Gabriel, Van der Ven, Petrovic, and probably Bruno Fernandez. Actually, looking at those players, right? I think from that, if I was looking at those expected points, I'd just put that. I'd put that in the low twenties. So I think anything. If I'm getting over twenty five, I'd be delighted. Of, of that bench boost if i'm getting 20 i'll be like cool if i'm like 16 or below i'll be like yeah that's um that's been a bit of a a failure but like, like looking at my um history i'm just looking at how many points i've benched 25 is the biggest game week i've i've benched but i've done i've benched a lot of points this year i've done like 18 i've done 22 then 25 16 14 yeah so i've benched a lot of points this year so i want this to be i want it to be you always want it to be your week of your strongest bench right so that's quite a high bar 25 though but yeah i think i think 20 is probably par for me this week you want your throat and hat trick on your bench that's what you want that's what uh, to, but to come on uh and get you your points yeah because, um yeah, but yeah, I think yeah, realistically, yeah, Fernandez would be the midfielder. I'd, I'd be benching them. Yeah, Van der Ven, of course, Petrovic, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, and then Gabriel, of course, like those are the players I'd be be um, benching. And I think Fernandez, we saw on previous slides, like his expected points of nine point five. I said Gabriel's of what three? That's twelve. Petrovic's expected points are probably six. You're yeah, up yeah. to nineteen there. Van der Ven is probably like four points. So. That's over 20 already when you're just looking at base expected yeah. points. So, like, yeah, I think um, I want it to be above 20, I think, given the way I've, I've set it up. That makes sense. Do you not, uh, do you not fancy putting, like, I, I do sometimes just to wind people up. You put people on the bench when, or people on your pitch that, you know, are going to play just to get that bench. Oh, you're yeah. going to put, like, Obviously, Son the, and Jackson the bench, on your the bench. The bench I've got there is, is taking the piss, right? Obviously, Edison, Foden, yeah. Palmer yeah. will be on my, my real bench, but, like, yeah, it's obviously calculate the bench. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at those like <laughs> players, but um, yeah, Gabriel Van der Ven, Fernandez, Petrovic, they're 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 the weakest players, I think. So like um, th those th those will be the ones I'll be assessing, like whether it's been a good good or bad week. Yeah, 14, 14 dollars <coughs> like that. 
out of fifteen, right? Can't can't complain. No, I'm, I'm good. less I'm I'm less less so in that in that field. I've got uh, one free transfer. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Currently, so I can get to nine without a hit. Um, my bench boost. I've activated it, and as I mentioned before, there's certain players in that defense side that I'm I'm fairly happy with us with their single game week. I'm not going to move out Brantwaite. He's at home to Sheffield United. I'm not going to move out Eight Nori. He's at home to Crystal Palace. Uh, played on the wing at the weekend. Played the 90 minutes, so I don't feel the need to move them. Mm. You know, transfer wise, I'm I'm more looking at the attackers. So I'm looking at potentially getting rid. For a game week of an Arsenal, the, the Arsenal attacker I've got, so Saka, mainly because that's where I've got money, getting rid of Eze, getting rid of Solanke. And then I'm bringing in the likes of Foden, Gordon, Jackson, potentially Rich Allison. I've only got two Tottenham players there. Um, so that, that's kind of where my head's at. I and I'll probably take a minus four, if not a minus eight. I'd, I'd probably do the minus eight there. I, I can, and, and as long as you've got money for Saka back in for a player of your choice next week. But I think Gordon's yeah. cheaper than Adley. Jackson's cheaper than Solanke, I think. So you should have money to do that. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd play around with it. But I'd, I'd, I'd be doing the minus eight probably. I think it's probably it probably does does work um, work out. Yeah, I mean... The, Bruno. Bruno to Saka or Bruno to Havertz is what I'd do in the final game week. Yeah, I think... Um, well, you, you, yeah, you've got double Arsenal defence anyway, so you're set up there. So I, I'd be going... I'd be quite happy moving Saka out for, for one game week only. And I think um, there's definitely an upside there. I, I think, yeah, I'd be doing a yeah, yeah. minus eight, I think, in, in your your situation. And, and agree with the defenders. Like, Branthwaite is is probably one of the better options for sure. So, you know, kind of, you should be really happy with him. Like Nori, there's, there's no one really you can go to. Obviously, you've got Gradio anyway, yeah. and then you know, with Foden, you'll be tripled up on the defence. Um, yeah, like you won't be bringing like a Spurs defender or a United defender for him. There's no point. So, yeah, I agree. Like Leave focus him. on those um, those uh, attackers. I mean, how far? How? I mean, a couple, two questions. Like, right? is that generally the best bench you've had all season? That is. Uh... To have the three Arsenal players on it, who are arguably the best team in the division, yes. No, I think you know, obviously, yeah. You got Eze on, I guess, yeah. Eze, you're moving him on to Gordon. You so like, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. 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 So my bench, my bench, my, like my real bench, who I'd actually um, have on there. So I'd, I'd have Gabriel would be on there. In all fairness, yeah. I'd play probably the three defenders of course, So it probably would be Gabriel and Ain't Nori, and then it'd be Eze. Yeah, you're moving him on. Yeah, um, that's it. When I do the transfers, I'm then I'm then going to have somebody like uh, Jackson on my bench or Gordon. You know, I'm going to have a, a fairly decent player on my bench. Yeah. Double um, up. So yeah, it, it just sense. makes it makes yeah. That's what, and I'd like to think my bench. I'll only have one, so I'll have eleven doublers based yeah. on that. Obviously, I can't play all eleven because I've only got two ben two defenders that are doubling. Um, so I'd have to I'd have to bench one of them. But so I'd I'd like to think I'm getting five fixtures on my bench. I've took a minus eight to get there. Bear that in mind. Um, so I'd like for the five fixtures. You you're hoping at least a ten, but with uh, with a minus eight, I'd want twenty as well. I'd want twenty off my bench. Yeah, how Idea. far how far ahead are you compared to me? Thirty. Let's go back. I've this. I've I took this off of uh, FPL Live. So what's that? 30, 34. and then it's Dallo against Eze. All right, yeah, I'm not catching you. Like, yeah, even with that minus eight, because like you're covering a lot of the the threats when you? you cover Gordon, you cover Jackson. Yeah. You cover Foden. Yeah. Not a bad deal for minus yeah. eight, and then like I just need Van, and you've got Gradio was a better option to be honest. So like, yeah, you, you just got to pray Van der Ven's goals are disallowed again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be it'd be what would it be? It'd be Van der Ven, Dallo, and Burn. That'd be that'd be the ones that I'd 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 be worrying about because I think the rest. I'd yeah, probably... they're not massive threats though, are they? Like Branfrey is is kind of you know, good there. Not. None of those. None of those guys are big attacking like defenders either. So like I think um 
Yeah, I think even with the minus eight, I think you've got it. You've got it. No, B, it, 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 take it down to twenty. Let's say A smashes it tomorrow. It take it down to twenty six. Say well, like wait, level at the end of this yeah. game week. It take it down to twenty six, but then you'd have an extra three fixtures on your bench. So that's net taking it down to twenty. So it's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. It's going to be clear. It's going to be an interesting one. Um. Hopefully, hopefully we both we both keep pushing green arrows. If we can both finish towards fifty k, happy days, right? No, I know that wasn't what we set out. <laughs> I think I think obviously the problem with, you, with with your big wins like last game week and then and then going into the double, it's just like you've had to take minus eights to get there, right? Ideally, you yeah. don't want to, but like you can see the logic. The logic like speaks for itself there, right? I think in terms of. I, it came off like massively last time you did the minus eight. This minus eight here, I think, makes a lot of sense as well. Um, it's not without risks, of course, moving Saka, but like the other two are no brainers. Not I, I'd probably move Saka up for for one game week only as as well. Um, yeah, it's just hard to yeah, given how competitive it is, probably hard to make real ground. In it. Yeah, that's it. Everybody above me is going to have those players as well. That's why I've probably grown this week because a lot of those players sold Saka and he pulled in a 10 yeah. um, and so on. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of moving to the template, which yeah. isn't going to do my, my, my overall rank any good. Um, but it also stops that template getting away from me and making me drop as much as it maybe would. So, yeah, difficult. Difficult. Who would I be waiting on? I'd be hoping Branthwaite smashes in a 15 pointer. That's what I'm well, hoping he's, on. He's been doing it, hasn't he? The last, I mean, <laughs> that's, yeah, he's done that's why he's still, right. still top 100k. Right. Branthwaite's attacking for <laughs> That's what he's in. Absolutely cane in it for me. And against Sheffield United, who knows? You know, it's uh, yeah. dice ball against Sheffield United. Watch out for those for those corners. Yeah. I think uh, Guardiola, well, if he gets the minutes, he looks like yeah, very, very good. Like, I think you know, you're, you're looking at a clean sheet. And then probably an attacking return as return as well. So he's looking, yeah. You know, if he has the minutes, he's looking like a very good good option for you. And then, yeah, the risks. You know, if you want to be a bit different, you can go Richardson. But I think yeah. Gordon of Foden are probably better as is Jackson. I think those are the threats for you, like and the yeah. threats for obvious for, for reasons because they're just very good players for the, for the those game weeks. So I can't crit criticize those moves. That'd yeah. be good. Well. We'll see what I do, but uh, I imagine it won't be far off exactly what we've discussed. Uh, but yeah, that brings us to an end. So, double game week, last one of the season, penultimate weekend of the season. I appreciate this hasn't been your best season, Matt. You're still you're still enjoying it. You're looking forward to the season being over. Like, where's your head at? No, it's been been um been good. I think um yeah, I want these like expected goal ranks to kind of come out from my like, FPL review, just so I can like. Um, I think there was, there was some stats out there that flirted before which was just saying like oh yeah quite unlucky from the underlying stuff in games versus what actually happened but it'd be nice to see those but um, I think I think to be honest like um, I can easily see where I've lost at least 120 points right from mistakes right so we'll do it when we do a proper kind of wrap up but yeah. like even without luck like you can kind of just like playing well you can get yourself in a position so I don't think I'd be top 10k if I was like added 100 points. I think I'd still be off that. I still think I'd be about 20, 30, 30k, 20k, something like that. But like, yeah, it's kind of reassuring that there were some like things that in that moment were quite dumb that I didn't need to do where I just like lost some big points. So like, that's still reassuring. Like, in even a season where there's like a lot of bad luck, it's just like if you actually played well, you could still be there or thereabouts in terms of those, yeah. those targets. Like, I'm thinking about, Hitting in Kevin De Bruyne when he was like when it was like peak Champions League season, right? I'm thinking yeah. captain in Darwin over Haaland. Like Darwin had better underlying stats, but it was a big risk to go against the crowd there. I'm thinking just doing unnecessary transfers that means I was benching Foden for multiple hat tricks. But yeah. yeah, I think um yeah, I think I think um yeah, it's been been good fun, like and uh, yeah, like I said. Reassuring that like, even in a season where there's been like some swingy stuff with injuries, benchings, and 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 kind of like underperformance against like stats, like yeah, I think I've, I I can kind of easily see where I could have gained a hundred points. 
Yeah. Probably same goes. To, I don't know if the same goes to you, but like, yeah, I, I, I can put my finger on like well, two sensible players. Yeah, well, I could, I could uh, do a lot better. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got a few. Uh, the, the big one for me, which I bought up a few times, is selling Son and Darwin. I oh, know, never. I sold Son and Solanke for Darwin and Mbumo, and it was just before Son and Solanke decided to to bring in a lot of points and and Mbumo and. Darwin didn't, so that was that was a big one. Um, and about five, six game weeks after that, I had Son and Solanke back. So unnecessary, unnecessary moves that probably cost me 40, 40 points there or thereabouts. So all of a sudden, an extra forty points I want them on. I'm, I'm in the top fifty k fairly comfortably, um, maybe even pushing top thirty k. Um, and then even somebody like Al Dakiel on the bench for. I, but, and, and, I don't feel like my wild card has been terrible from game week 30, but put myself in a position where I had the cheapest defence possible apart from Gabriel and I had no money to do anything with any of them. Uh, that that probably hurt me a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I think yeah. the way double game week fixtures like landed and your squad prepping up to that it kind of forced you into an early wild card, which is probably not ideal because, like, obviously. I think there's it's, it'll be probably minus sixteen and camping in terms of hits, right? Like, which is not not ideal. Like, and a lot of that was like through through kind of bad luck. But like there, I mean, even yeah, that, that wild card card start time, and you've got like you can probably count like twenty points easy that could have been gained. So like yeah, when when you add that like those mistakes and add that bit of luck with the wild card, you're talking about top twenty k, top ten k really for you. So yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll do we'll do these moments. I think yeah, when we do our review, because I think we're yeah, yeah. We're, uh, it's not we'll time yet. In, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But we'll also we'll also celebrate the highs and when we do that as well. And and the the, the big players, the the good times. There's been there has been some. There has been some. I might not have felt it all the time, but there has been some as well. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll well, the best is yet to come, isn't it? The the kind of yeah, the random the the hat trick. Exactly. Not you've in. got you've got I mean this game we come in. We're both on greens already. We've both got two players still to go, which is more than the vast majority of players. What do, what do you want to see? What, what do you want to see the most in this double game week? What what player doing what thing do you want to see the most? <laughs> um good question. Well I've got to, I've got to pick one of the players I'll have that most people won't have, right? So I wanna see I wanna see the single game week players do well. That's what I want to see. I want to see people like Branthwaite, Nori, Raya, Gabriel. Branthwaite again. I want yeah. them to Kane. Uh, That's what I, I, was want. Hoping, I was hoping you're going to be a bit more like emotive than than like uh, being be sensible. I think I would I would like I would love like a big Pedro Porro return, like because like I I this is the first time I've owned him in 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 the season. Obviously, he was going for that spell where he was looking awesome every single game, and as a non-owner, it, it was like. Bloody scary, but he's a good he's a good player, right? And it'd be like, yeah, really cool if he gets like a a goal or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take it. I've got it. I'll absolutely take it. I'd like him. I liked him to score against Man City. Really, I, I, I'd, I'd like, um, I'd like them to lose that game. <laughs> we, so I'm taking we're both uh, wanting Arsenal to win the league. No, they, I think they've been the best. They've been the best team, and they they've been the best team. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think. There's something new in. There's something new winning it. So yeah, I'm a Tottenham. I'm definitely a Tottenham fan that day. Um, much like I am a fan of whoever City are playing for the next three games. To be fair, so um, up, up the Gunners. Uh, but Matt, thanks, thanks for joining us, pal. Uh, appreciate your time as always. Doing it on a Sunday. Good job is we're, we're both off tomorrow. Obviously with the with the bank holiday. Doing anything exciting? <laughs> Well, I, that, you can share. Yeah. <laughs> that you can share yeah. you're working you're working it's not a bank holiday um getting ahead of yeah, the game I'm, 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 if, yeah, if it helps me i'm just driving down to liverpool so you're, you're, like, it's not going to be that exciting either it's a good it's a good four hours drive from where i live four and a half yeah. hours with a stop so it's not going to be that exciting for a bank holiday either get, get a good podcast on you're gonna replay yourself I hate listening to my own voice, <laughs> so I'll skip. I'll skip. I'll uh, I'll listen to one of the like Peter Crouch podcast or something, um, yeah. or listen to Focal. Um, but yeah, but no, appreciate that. Enjoy work tomorrow. At least have a half day or something, um, and we'll catch up. 
after game week 37 where we're both we're both smashing it up the ranks again absolutely cool good luck man thank you very much and thank you to list for you the listeners uh for joining us hopefully you learned something if you have give us a like give us a follow hit that subscribe button i really do does help we do remember you bring in tix matt's advice or don't but you should he's former world number one so bring in the place he said and i wish you all the best with those green arrows and we will catch you in the run-up to the last game week of the season game week 38 when we speak to you next week all the best till then